Hi everyone, this is Apollo. Today I am going to demo um, how to do robot explosions. So uh, just to see what that explosion, robot explosion might look like, um, go to Instagram slash bots and click on on this particular or one of these two and you can see, click on it and play it and you can see that robot just going and just exploding into uh, multiple drops. We won't necessarily do that green uh, smoky, let's see, that we won't do that smoky explosion. We can do that on another video, but we'll definitely do the chops. Uh, the process is going to look uh, like this. There's a bunch of steps here, but let's take a look at it real quick. We're going to create a Unity project, create folders within there, create a battle scenes, create our environment that has a ground. We can create an enemy model in, bl in Blender, um, create the robot skins for that, create the bones, add some idle animations, um, create a dying animation. Uh, when we save that model, it's going to automatically be imported to Unity because we place it in a folder uh, within uh, Unity. And then we'll incorporate uh, and sort of configure the idle animation for that particular model in Unity. And then we'll uh, do some controllers for the model so that we can uh, have it do the idle animation and dying animation. Uh, and then we'll uh, take some input so that uh, initially the robot will be in idle. And then we'll um, uh, look for the, the K key to kill the robot and put that into a dying state. And then we'll um, handle some scripts around that or handle some events around the dying state. So we'll uh, add events to that dying animation for the Unity model. Uh, and then we'll add, add some scripts to sort of intercept some uh, specific parts of the animation so we can add uh, explosions and sounds and things like that. And then we can take our uh, original robot enemy that we, our Blender model, and copy that and, and um, create uh, a new model out of that and create chunks. We'll edit that chunks model and slice and dice uh, so it'll be part of our explosion. We'll save our chunks uh, and then it'll be imported into Unity. And then from that we can um, create a uh, what's called a prefab uh, that we can use in um, our original model and we can replace that model when it does actual explosion and instantiate that um, so that uh, we can apply some script to uh, force out those chunks and it looked like the mo the uh, our enemy robot just exploded into chunks essentially. So lots, lots of stuff to do. Hopefully I can get this under an hour. I think I can. All right, so let's start. Uh, let's first of all open up uh, Unity. So open up your Unity application and uh, going to create a new project. And I am going to put this under, let's see, not under games, but under demos. Let's see, blah, 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 development, Unity. Nope, that's not where I want to put it, under demo. Okay, cool. Open. Make sure that that's the correct path. Okay, and we'll just call this robot explosion and hit create project. So import whatever asset it needs to import. And then you should come to this initial empty scene. All right, we've got an empty scene. So let's go down here and create some folders to create folder and we'll call this underscore actually I think the preferred format well we'll do it this way let's call it scenes and here we'll create a folder called uh, blender models and also we'll create a folder called prefabs and prefabs um, you should those are just things that are some are templates that can contain uh, Unity objects and uh, models and uh, script, etc. Just a way to easily create templates so you can reuse them elsewhere in your app or in your game. 
uh, and we'll also create something called scripts, and that's where we're going to have our uh, logic for stuff. All right, let's do create, right click on the scripts folder and create a scene, and we'll just call this battle scene. All right, double click on that, and let's do um, viewing this from the front. You can do option and three finger drag to sort of see what's there. Let's create a an empty object. We'll call this environment. And uh, within environment, we're going to create a 3D object called plane. And that plane, uh, everything should be zeroed out. So you can sort of, this is where um, things are going to fall into. And it's going to hold our models in place. It's going to have some physics. Uh, so for the plane, let's rename this to ground. And uh, along the x-axis, let's increase the scale to 20. And along the z-axis, let's increase it to 20 as well. All right. Uh, so that uh, forms the basic structure for, or at least just the, the basic empty project. Next, we're going to um, create a uh, blender model that represents our robot. All right, so let's open Blender. Uh, let's see, I have to type it into here. Open up Blender, and let's create a new model. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of the, these cameras, and, or this camera, and um, light. All right, so what Blender did was created this default cube. Uh, I hit 5 to go from orthogonal to perspective view. Hit 1 to view um, the object from the front. Um, but let's do um, orthogonal view so that it, it's easier to work with. All right, so what I want to do is um, remove this. I think I just want to add a sphere uh, and use that and we'll split that up into um, maybe three um, pieces and we can just shape it a little bit. So let's do add shift A to add an, um, a mesh. So let's hit, let's take a look at a UV sphere and it doesn't have to be very detailed. Um, so let's uh, reduce the segments to 16 and maybe eight rings and that should be enough uh, shape for us. Hit enter there. And let's put this uh, down towards here. I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing the, uh, I'm, I do three finger drag on a MacBook. That's what I have. Uh, and we can, if you hit N, it'll show you, it'll uh, bring up this view with the, that allows you to directly modify the properties of your object. So let's do that. And then the other thing I want to do is let's move this up to, this is the Z axis, I believe. So let's make it one. And then I want to center um, the object, or I want the origin to be in this thing. So if you hit Shift C, it takes the cursor to uh, 0, 0, 0 uh, coordinate point. And you can set the origin of this current object to the 3D cursor. So when I bring in the model into um, Unity, it'll be uh, at the correct, uh, it, it will be at the right origin for use with Unity. There's no right or wrong way. I just like the bottom to be zero, zero, um, just to make things look cleaner, I guess. All right, so uh, we've got our object here. And if you hit tab, It'll give you uh, allow you to edit the meshes in there, and what I'm going to do is I am going to um, just split it up into three. So this this top part could be the head, this middle part could be the body, and then this bottom part could be its leg area. So let's go in, and uh, I'm going to unselect all by hitting A, uh, and then I want to select using faces. So if you hit Control Tab and hit the F key or just click on this face, it'll allow, uh, it will allow you to select faces. So um, I'm also going to hit Z and this mode allows you to sort of see 
uh, through the faces, uh, through the objects, so you can see where all the points and lines and faces are. And I'm going to use a select tool called, um, I think it's a box select tool, and I'm just going to try to select this part. But let's do this. Actually, I'm going to do vertex selection. Let's see, do I want to do vertex selection? Yes, no. Let's see, why do I want to do vertex selection? Because I want to take this and, and separate it out. How can I do that? Let me pause for a second. All right, so what I want to do is essentially disconnect um, th these meshes from each other. So you can definitely copy meshes by hitting Shift D. Let me try that. Let me select. If you hit B, um, let's see. If you hit B, it'll come up with this uh, mesh or, or this select tool, a box select tool. But let me change the selection mode to vertex, which means it's going to select points. So now I'm going to hit B again. And I'm going to select this piece. And then I'm going to um, do Shift D to duplicate. So now I've duplicated that mesh. It's still within the same object. So now I'm going to hide what I've just um, created. If I, if you move your mouse around, you can see that it created this particular mesh. And let me. Um, but what I'm going to do is hide that selection, and then go back here again, and select the just right above the last mesh that I did, and delete that. I'm going to delete vertices, so I'm left with uh, whatever is in here. And then if I hit Escape, um, or yeah, let me do this. Hit 1 to view from the front. Um, what this gives us is um, the rest of the model. Um, so let me do, actually, go do alt H and that brings back my other model I'm just gonna move it up or my other mesh I'm gonna move that up and then just look underneath here you can use two finger uh, drag up and down just to see to move the model around uh, I'm gonna hit a and then what I want to do is if I if you hit Z again you go back to this um, edit mode and you can see the faces what I want to do is fill in this piece. So I want to select the lines that are um, at the bottom of this particular part and do Control Tab E. That allows us to do edges. And then if you do Option and then um, right click on your mouse or on your uh, trackpad, then it should select uh, everything in there. And you hit, if you hit F, it'll fill in um, the bottom of that. So I think I'm okay. Oh, let's not save it yet. I'm okay with this um, where that is right now. Uh, and then we need to fill in this part as well. So let's do Alt or Option, right click on that edge and then hit F and then we've got that part filled. All right, so we've got this, this head part. We have a body part. What we want to do is duplicate this bottom, sort of move this out from there as well. And it's a similar process. I'll hit Z, well, hit A to deselect everything. Um, a to sort of toggle select all and unselect all. All right, so I want this part. So let's do Z again to view the wireframe uh, part of this. And let's do Control Tab V to select vertices. And let's do the box select using B. And we'll select all that. And Shift D to copy. And then um, I'm just going to move it out so that I can work with removing the other pieces of this. And I'm going to deselect uh, by hitting A. And then I'm going to select this part and uh, going to delete that. So box select using B. 
I'm in vertex select mode and I hit X to delete uh, the vertices and it just removes all the vertices but leaves other vertices intact so now I go back to go back to Z so I can see what I'm doing I'm going to fill the bottom of this go back actually uh, select your edge control tab E uh, and then again do option right click and then hit F to fill in the bottom there and then do the same thing here uh, hit A to deselect everything that's selected and then uh, option right click and fill that in with F and then we can um, go back to um, the view the mesh view by hitting Z deselect everything and I'm going to do the box view again to select this mesh and move it up hopefully that's close to zero actually why don't we do this we are going to flatten out um, this body so that it can make room for the other stuff here or the, the rest of um, the head and the bottom part so we do scaling and we're going to scale it all along the Z axis so you hit S Z and then you just push it in and then we we have a smaller uh, or shorter body and now we can select these other pieces and move it up without having um, you know, and still be able to work separately in each part all right let's do B Oh, let's do the the uh, the box select is uh, cumulative so if you already have something selected and you select this again it'll select this too but we don't want that we just want to select this head part all right and let's use those axes handles to move stuff up and down all right so I think that's where it was originally as far as like the top of the um, the circle or the top of the model originally let's do this hit Z to go go back out to um, a what is it called this is render or solid mode all right hit tab to uh, move out of edit mode and then we can add another cube just for comparison so add a cube uh, here and then it should the top of this is this grid so I think we're close enough hit command Z to remove that puppy alright so we've got the head part we got the body and we've got the bottom part uh, and then what we should do is make some distinct um, material so we can sort of see where everything is so let's go here and um, select this object and go in and we'll just make some materials here add a new one uh, let's call this uh, the head and then we'll add another one call it body and then add another one I don't know what we should call this one I guess we'll call it the bottom <laughs> all right so we'll make some different colors here so you're in object mode and you hit tab to go into edit mode Z again to go into um, edit mode to editing the mesh we'll hit B to select the head part and then what we can do is for the head we can assign that uh, that material to the meshes to the mesh it's selected and then what we can do is create a different color this diffuse let's make it um, let's make it sort of orange well let's make it green because I like green and then we'll look at the body and let's make the body gray uh, so hit A to deselect, B to select this mesh. And really, this uh, material right now is still 
the head material. So if you hit, remember when you do these keys, your mouse has to be over like the area that you want to apply these keys to. But if you hit, make sure your mouse is hovering over here, hit Z and everything is, is the head material. So what you want to do is you want to uh, make this the body, um, assign the body to this. So once you've selected a mesh, select the material that you want to assign to that mesh and you can hit assign and it'll change the color of that and for the body we'll use um, maybe gray uh, let's use a, a different color blue about red what goes good with green I should know this answer let's make it sort of yellowish and then we'll hit a Z again to an A to deselect everything and we're in, in the mesh view mode here select the bottom part select bottom, uh, assign the bottom mesh to what you've selected and then we'll make this one maybe a dark green so we'll select that and let's hit Z so we sort of know and tab yeah yeah that looks good looks good to me and then we can do some accents so we know where the front is and where the back is and we'll use this K tool the cutting tool to uh, do some cuts. All right, let's go ahead and save this so we don't lose any work here. So Command S to save it, and then we'll go into the demo folder, and we'll save this in a folder that we created. Um, it's our Blender models, and when you save this here, Robot Enemy is what we'll call it. Uh, one thing you'll notice when you save it there is. Um, Unity becomes aware of it and it'll sort of import that information into Blender and you can see your model there automatically. It's got the model. It, if it has any rig, it'll notice that too. If it has any animations, it'll notice that and allow you to play and set up the animations that Unity will recognize. Alright, so that's the first part of um, creating this Blender model, just creating the mesh for it and just what it looks like, its colors, how it reacts to light, etc. Alright, so now we have um, created our mesh, our um, armature with uh, its bones fixed to influence on various parts of the mesh. The next thing we're going to do is create some, anima uh, some animation uh, because we want our robot enemy to sort of look a little bit active and doing stuff and it just gives better feedback to sort of what's going on with our our enemy so let's do some animation so I'm gonna hit N here um, let's go I'm gonna hit tab to go out of animation here or of uh, post mode deselect everything and then tab uh, let's select this guy select the mesh uh, and then hit N to remove that properties panel All right so let's add some animations and I'll, what I like to do is I like to go into this um, into the animation view because it gives me a lot more control of sort of what's going on with the animation so let's do uh, get out of perspective view into orthogonal view hit one to by the way it's five to sort of go in and out of that uh, perspective and orthogonal view all right one to view things from the front <clears throat> all right so I'll select what I'll do is create an idle animation and if you look at this this is a timeline uh, marker and what you can do, what I would suggest doing is just selecting um, your bones here. Select everything, each bone, and um, while your mouse is over this animation, this uh, design area, hit I for insert. And I would just, we're not moving anything uh, in a coordinate perspective, but we're just going to insert location and rotation. Uh, keyframes and it'll insert into this very very first frame uh, and I'm going to expand this uh, zoom in on the scale of this by doing um, just two fingers sort of out 
and it'll give me <clears throat> it'll zoom into this scale. I like to see it five frames at a time. So when I get to there we go, 45, 35. And let's do some animation here. So what I can do is I can do some similar behavior. A sort of deselects and selects everything. Or you can go into this uh, top part of this drop sheet and right click to select stuff. And then you can do Shift D as well in order to um, to copy. So I'll do Shift D, and you just move your mouse and see what frame you want this to go into. So I'll copy it there, um, and this just captures like the location and rotation of each of these bones, and each one of these dots represents um, the bone and parameters around them. All right, so <clears throat> essentially, when I go to the first frame, and this this is sort of like the timeline here that sort of shows you what uh, the different frames you're stepping through. So if you hit this play button, right, it just plays the animation. Uh, and I don't. This tells you how many frames there are in this particular file. I don't need 250. I think for now, um, let's do 20, and we'll increase it as we need it. Uh, so what our animation is going to do is at the beginning uh, where here everything is uh, as we first started when I get to this point on the fifth frame what I want to do is just make the head rotate to the left so let me do this um, let me just select that one the head bone uh, and you can hit seven to view something straight from the top and you can do rotation here by eyeball. So if you do R, rotate it to the left, and that looks like it's um, looking towards my my left. Hit enter. And what I like to do is select everything, every bone. So I hit A. Uh, however times I need to get it to select every bone. And hit I again. And I do location and rotation. And then on the tenth frame, what I want to do is have it at our original position, so I can uh, right-click on this top part of this uh, set of points, hit Shift D again, and then here on the tenth frame, it's going to go to um, that position, original position. So if you step through the frames, um, this steps to each uh, sort of keyframe that we've inserted. So the first keyframe, set of keyframes, looking left, looking back to the middle, and then the next thing we need to do is have it look all the way to the, the right, or not all the way, but to the right. So hit seven again to view it from the top. Hold on, let's select this one frame. Hit seven, and let's do, hit R to uh, start the rotation tool, and then about there, is where I want it to look and um, again select all bones hit I and hit do location rotation it's really just rotation because it's not you know there's really no movement anywhere uh, so on our actually we needed to what happened here so let's do this boom we didn't we lost our midpoint but that's okay I think what will end up happening is we'll have idle, look left, look right, and then back to, or not idle, but back to this neutral position. So let's just copy this one over here on the 15th frame. So now I'm going to make this go from 1 to 15. And we can see this animation sort of repeating itself. So 1 through 15. It's going to look left, look right. So when it's not doing anything, it's just like a little bit nervous because, you know, it's about to get ex uh, shot at and exploded. So it just does that deal. And you can add other uh, things. So you can make this bottom part rotate as well. But um, I think this is enough. You can do all kinds of things with this. You can make the whole thing sort of go left and, you know, uh, lean left, lean right kind of deal.
or you can make the whole thing go up and down. And let's do, maybe we'll do that left, right. All right, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> We're not gonna tweak too much. All right, we'll save this. All right, so now our I, this is our idle animation. It just looks left, looks right until something it decides to do something or something happens to it, like a death. So we have an idle animation and a dying animation. So one through fifteen is that, uh, and then from twenty to you know a little bit, we want our death animation. So this is sort of the neutral position, the original position for the. Uh, for our um, armature and bones. So let's copy that. I'll do Shift D here. And then the dying animation, what it's going to do is, um, you know, it can do all kinds of stuff, I guess. What we'll do is we'll just have, have it rock its head back and forth, and maybe its uh, body, and then have it you know, shake its head really fast, and then that will be the end of the animation. So let's start with this. Let's copy that uh, set of keyframes. And then let's do, for this part, let's select the head. And we'll just have it rotate its head really, really fast. So we could probably take this guy and just copy that into our 25th one, but we'll, the, we'll squeeze those keyframes together so it's like really, um, like happening really quickly. So maybe left, and our right one is this one. So like that, Shift D, and then do right, and then we'll make it We'll copy two of these so it'll do it multiple times. And then they're sort of close together. So this is starting at 20. Idle, left, 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 right, left, right. Maybe we'll do it another, another couple of frames. So three times it's going to sort of rotate its head or shake its head. Uh, and then we'll have it um, sort of tilt left to right its head. So let's go back to, this is 20. So let's, let's look at and see where we are so far. 20 to 40. So if we just play it, you can see it's like, oh, it's going really, really fast. And you can compress those just to get more of an effect, but that's good enough for now. Um, let's do, I need another like normal position, which is this. And we'll put it here. at the 40th one. Let's look at it. It ends there. And then what we'll do is we're at the uh, sort of neutral position here. Well, let's copy this. And then we'll do a left, right, lean left, lean right kind of deal. So select this guy, R, like that a little bit. And I would select everything. And hit I, locate ro location ro uh, rotation frames. And then I would copy the normal position again for the next part here. And what this will do is it will um, just select this. We'll rotate it to the right as well. And then let's do this. Select everything, insert location, rotation. 
and let's move this guy a little bit closer. Select both of these keyframes, duplicate, G also does a move for you here, and then duplicate it again, and then let's go back to normal position. So let's copy this set of keyframes and put it so this is going to 55. So our death goes from 20 to 55. And let's play it and we can see sort of how it behaves. So rotation, rotation, rattle, rattle. <laughs> Tempted to do something with the body there, but I think you, you get the point. You could do stuff with this a little, maybe make the whole thing lean at the end. Let's do that. Let's put another. Um, Five, sixty. Make it to sixty-five, maybe. And then what we'll do is, as a final thing, let's get it to pose sort of sideways, sort of broken up a little. So we're here. What we want to do is have it so that. Um, this guy is leaning this way and then the head part is um, leaning this way and then it looks like oh it's broken help me help me now and maybe we'll put this part over here like that and then let's do I I oh select everything and do I I and then we'll just duplicate this so that it holds that pose across frames that make it the last one so 65 is the very last one so 20 to 65 now let's see what it looks like go to the beginning of our range play it yeah shake shake rattle broken Shake, shake, rattle, broken, and broken. <laughs> and we might want to hold it longer, so just for a fact. Um, well, let's see. G to move that guy. All right, 65 to 70, just a long, broken pose. So we really have two animations here. One through 20 is... Um, the idle one, 20 through 70, is the um, the death one. Save this. And then what will happen is in Unity, it will actually update that, um, that model so it has uh, everything in there. So if you hit play, you can see, like, hey, there's all kinds of animations that we got idle and um, death animation and the next thing is going to be uh, defining identifying those frames so that we know when idle is and when kill uh, when when dying is all right so uh, we created our animations in blender uh, and we've saved it and it's automatically imported uh, into unity uh, so the next thing we need to do is go to our model and, and identify uh, some things that are um, identify the animation. So if you select your model um, and it's in the Blender Models uh, Robot Enemy folder, what you should uh, see is uh, this property. Just click on Animations um, button there and it'll show you sort of what's here. Um, and there's a default animation that it created, this default take, but we, what we want to do is identify the animations that we sort of segmented out in Blender. So hit this plus button down here, and let's name this idle. And we know that that uh, start of that is from zero 
it's really from 1 to 20 in Blender, but it's offset by 1 uh, in Unity. So it's 1 minus uh, 1, which is 0, and it goes through 20 minus 1, which is 19. And this one we want to loop because whenever it's an idle animation, we just want it to keep doing that same thing over and over again without having to write any code to like restart the animation. So we'll add that. And then we'll add another one called uh, die. It's my die animation. And we know that it starts from 20 up to, I want to say 69. Yeah, it is 69 because it tells you right there. So again, let's start at 19 through 69. Uh, you can actually tell like if it's correct, because if you hit display, yeah, all this thing is like dur, 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 dur. Um, And then for this one, the die animation, you can, so let's see what it's doing. Mm. There we go. And you can, <clears throat> so how do I rotate this? Is it control or alt? Is it? There we go. You can see what's happening from the front. Battle rattle, pose, done. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so uh, after we've demarcated where all those um, animations uh, lie in the model, think that we have to hit apply but let me remove these guys default robot action I don't really need that either uh, hit apply all right so now uh, we're ready to sort of incorporate this into our um, into our blender model here and um, right click and create just to create an empty object I'm just going to call it uh, enemies about robot enemies and then right click again and um, create empty call it robot enemy and then we're going to drag this guy into our robot enemy um, fold. Okay, our robot enemy parent. There, I need to call it something else. <clears throat> Let's just call it the robot. All right. So if you look at this, like what happened to my eyes? There's some weirdness between uh, rotation between um, Blender. It's not really weird. Um, like front facing of Blender is back facing for Unity. So you just have to rotate along this axis, which is the Y axis. So rotate it 180 degrees. Select this uh, model that you added in there. Rotate it by 180. And then you can see the front of the face. Boom. Um, so now that we've added that in there, we really want to, um, <clears throat> we want this guy to do some action, uh, add an animator to it. Let's see. Let's add a controller. In order to add a controller, all we have to do is go into, I believe we can right click, let's right click on this guy and do create Da, 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 animator controller and let's call this robot enemy controller and its job is to just manage the state of um, of things that it that it's assigned to and uh, those states can have animations associated with it. it could have script associated with those states so let's take this guy robot enemy and add this robot enemy controller to here and double click on this and what this uh, what we'll do is we'll right click and add uh, this takes you to the animator editor 
where you can add states. So let's add a state here. We'll call it idle. And what we need to do is um, add this idle animation that was sort of created automatically when we identified those different uh, animation frames, start and end. Uh, but we can take this and put this here and do that's the motion that's associated with this state. So now if we go to our scene and if we hit play, it's automatically uh, going to once it's entered, once the controller gets once the game starts the controller will enter here and automatically go to this idle animation. So let's hit play. And it should like it. It's um, the default state is idle, which has this idle animation. It doesn't sit there and just look around and just wait for stuff to happen. All right. So the next thing we should do is create this other um, incorporate our die animation. At some point, it has to die. So let's create another state, and we'll put. Uh, die as the name of it die and then it's going to transition from this idle state to this die state um, and it doesn't let's just have it what it'll do like if you don't put any conditions on this click on the this transition object and you can have conditions from going to idle to die this doesn't have any so once this idle animation is over it's going to go into this die state and for this die state we're going to associate this die animation with it and then so what once it goes into the die state it's done it, the die uh, animation doesn't loop so what we could do is for now just tell it to hey go back to the idle state and then the idle state that will do this animation so it'll just idle die idle die let's hit save on this and uh, hit play and see what it does. So it's going to idle and then blah, 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 poof. there we go. Alright. So we have pretty much set up um, you know our states and idle animation but let's do a rule uh, between uh, idle and die so that um, it makes a little bit of sense. It just doesn't automatically go into idle Let's hit this. Um, we're gonna add a um, a state property, and we'll make it a boolean, and we'll call it is dead. And actually, let's capitalize that. So is dead. Check it off. Well, it's not dead yet. So now uh, in the transition. We'll add a condition so that it only transitions when is dead is true. So now when we uh, hit play, right, it's just going to go into idle until somebody says, hey, I'm dead. That'll be the next part of um, this demo is we're just going to wait until somebody hits the K key and it's going to go into that die animation uh, and then it'll be done. Right, so what we need to do is detect the input from um, from the keyboard so that when the player hits K that it's going to uh, set this state for this controller so that it um, it'll set this is dead state to true so that um, it will go into the die animation uh, and to that end what we need to do is go into our scripts folder and do right click and create a C sharp script and let's call it um, player input uh, let's call it player input and um, it we can double click on this um, file and it will bring up mono develop obviously
All right, so that's the script. But what we need to do is the script doesn't run against um, by itself. It has to run against something. So we'll take it our robot enemy, and we can um, drag this here, put it into our robot enemy, and it'll add it as a component, and it's going to um, sort of run against this object. So if you look at robot enemy, it's got this thing called controller. What we need to do is, let's see, on update, uh, what we can do is do input dot get key and um, key code dot k and that returns a boolean so you say if input key code dot key is that then uh, set state to whatever. So I'm going to do a little bit of clean code. So what we do is if uh, kill key, let's do if is kill key, then what we want to do is set state to is dead or set is dead state. All right, so let's take this guy and we're gonna have a function that's going to do set is dead state. And then we're gonna have a, a function that returns boolean is kill key. And all it's doing is returning whether that state is um, or whether the whether the key pressed is or whether uh, the K key is pressed um, so if it's that then set the dead state is dead state but we have to um, find um, the, the animators so equals to and this is where um, the script is always associated with an object. It's a component of an object. So if we do get component um, and we're looking for animator, uh, and it shouldn't be null, but if it's null, then don't do anything, which is possible. Uh, otherwise, do animator dot set state or set bool and is dead to true. All right, so that pretty much sets up detecting the keyboard and setting that to a kill state. Build it, command B to build it. All right, let's, let's run it again, or let's run it. And now when we hit the K key, it'll go from idle to kill, shiver, Oh, it's dead. So now it's just going to continuously do it because it's always once the is dead key or is dead state has been set or property has been set, it automatically goes from idle to dead and then back to idle and then back to dead. So, all right. The next thing we need to do is um, take our robot enemy. Um, model and we want to create another model based on that uh, that is a sliced up chunked up version of that model so we can make it part of an explosion so let's work on that for now and let's do how's the best way to do this we'll just go to um i'm actually going to quit this unity app real quick just so um, it doesn't try to automatically generate things that I copy and paste. So let's do, we're in our Blender models. This really needs to be in a separate folder. Um, but I won't do that outside of Blender, otherwise it'll get confused. So let's do 
Yes, I will do it within there. Hold on. So it tracks everything. Come on, Unity. All right, so let's create a folder here. Uh, and let's call it robot enemy. And then we'll move this these assets where did it go okay, oh there it is all right let's multi select call this deselect this guy and then move everything into robot enemy all right so uh blender no or not unity knows that that stuff is there let's do create a new folder we'll call it robot enemy chunks that's our stuff that's gonna get blown up double click on that and we'll just take the this guy and copy it and this is where I'm gonna close unity here so it doesn't try to do stuff yet um, take this copy it paste that here and we'll call it robot enemy chunks double click and it should edit that and what you want to do is just get rid of all these animations or these keyframes delete the keyframe uh, and then let's go into default mode and let's do we've got this selected alt p we're, we'll clear the parent but before we do that, let's go back into the beginning and do get away from pose mode. Or, all right, let's back it up here. Hold on. I'm going to undo everything. No, let's, where's my animation mode? Animation, and let's bring everything to the beginning here. Because I want to start with this particular uh, configuration. So we're at the very beginning, first frame. Well, let's try it again. First frame, select everything, X to delete, and back to default. All right, and then let's do, we've got unselect everything, select this guy, command or option P to help clear the parent. And then let's go and delete this guy. Well, let's go into object mode and delete this. All right, and save it. And what we're gonna do is we we need to separate uh, these guys into separate objects. So let's select this object. Tab. Um, hit P. No, not P yet. Let's do uh, Z, and actually we don't need to do that yet. So let's select everything and hit the P key, and we want to uh, separate these three pieces by least parts. So when we do that, we end up with three different objects, sphere, sphere 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and these guys are going to be the ones that are going to be flying into, uh, into the air. Uh, and one thing we want to do is take this guy and slice that up some more. So we go into edit mode, select everything, hit the Z for uh, frame. You can actually hide everything other than what we selected. So we hit Shift H. Okay. Oh, uh, hold on. I don't think we have to worry about that. These guys because they're they're the different objects. We're only editing uh, the head object. So. There's a tool called uh, the, the cutting tool. You've seen it earlier, but there's a if you uh, hit Shift K instead of K, it will actually slice through the whole object, um, sort of across the plane that you you see. So what we'll do is just make a cross a cut across the head like this. Um, let's do Shift K, and we'll start here, and we'll just like go all the way across this way let's do it across here where it's might be easier to sort of fill back in 
and uh, hit enter. Oh, hold on, let's try that again. Shift K, select everything, Shift K, and go this way. And then you have to actually uh, mouse click to get it to take effect. So we've done that. So what we'll end up having is this slice and a half bit will be somewhat hollow in the middle there. You can't tell because um, we're sort of in the wrong mode. But let's do option. Make sure you're in edge select mode. And let's do option right click. Oh, actually, we need to separate it first. So. Let's do control tab vertex and do this. Um, we'll do a select tool, but it's going to be the circle select because we just want to select all the way through here. So let's take this part, hit C, and let's make it a little bit bigger. And just, oh, dang it. touch all these points that I need to be part of this top half of my model. And this one, that one, that one, all through here. think that's it. And if you hit P, it's going to take that and make it a separate, take your selected uh, vertices, rotate around, make sure you have everything selected correctly. If you hit P uh, by selection, so now we have two objects, this top left half and the top or the bottom right half. Um, get out of Z. So I've got that selected. I need to go into select this guy, go into edit mode, and then hit alt right click and it'll select where you cut everything and you can fill it. And let me move it out here. Actually let me undo that. Let me do it. Let's see where we are. Uh, what's my G is to move it. And then let's see what it looks like. See that piece doesn't have any uh, face on it. So it will look funny when we, um, when we explode it. So let me undo this. Go into edit mode. Option. Um, right click, fill it, go back into object mode, move it, and now when we look at the bottom of it, it's there. But this other half doesn't have it, so let's select that one, hit tab, option, right click, fill that, and go back to object mode, and when we move it, you can see that it's filled in, right? So um, when we make it explode, it's going to behave the way you want it to. All right, so let's go ahead and actually let's hide these guys since we've already converted or slice this up. And you hit the H button to hide whatever you've selected. Let's select the body part and let's go look at it from the front here. The previous one we sliced this this way. This time let's slice it this way so it'll give it a unique look. I'm gonna hide this bottom piece. H, select an H, select your body, tab, go to frame, wireframe mode, and hit shift K again. Oh, let's select everything first, escape out of that. A Shift K and let's go across here. Click, drag, click, 
click again. Now we've got that bottom part selected, or we've got this slice uh, that we've selected, and it cuts all the way through the object there. Uh, and let's do a select tool, C for circle select. Make it a little bit bigger for this initial set of parts. Boom, 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 and I think that's all selected, let's see, yep, that looks right, and again, hit P, and uh, separate the mesh from the rest, and it's going to create a separate object, hit Tab, unselect everything, and let's go back to Z, or to um, object mode, um, you can select this one. Hit. You can probably just um, move it over to the left a little, just so you can see what's there. Notice, like inside, it doesn't have a face. Again, hit tab. Let's select the edge here. Alt or Option. Right click, fill it. It's filled. Go out of edit mode, select this other object, uh, go into edit mode, hit the tab key, option, right click, fill it, good to go on that, um, go back into object mode, and then alt H displays everything again. So you can see we've sort of sliced and diced. Um, let me take this and move it. Let's see. One, deselect everything. G to move this this way. And you can see that we've got two chunks here, or four chunks. Um, now let's go in and we may not need to do this one. I think five pieces is good for now. Uh, one thing we should do is um, we want. Notice all of these when we removed it from, or we separated it from the main object, the mesh, to create a new object, their origin is at the bottom. For this one, what you want to do is set the origin for each of these chunks to their center. So select the object, set origin to center of mass. That makes more sense when we apply physics to it. Set origin to center of mass, same with this. Set origin to center of mass. Set origin to center of mass. And then save it. All right, so let's go back to our um, Unity. We need to open it back up again so we close it so I wouldn't try to do stuff and until we were done setting up the our chunks model. Go back to robot explosion and then as we open it it's going to re-import or import this particular model. So if we go back to our blender model we've got these enemy chunks and it's going to see four objects or five objects there. Everything's filled in where we sliced it. All right, so that's how you take a Blender model, copy it, slice it up in Blender, and let uh, Unity import that new chunks model. All right, so the next thing I want to do is have is create this robot script that's responsible for uh, containing information about uh, the uh, the robot chunks that I want to use as part of the explosion. Uh, so I'm going to create a script called robot down here. Create C sharp script, call it robot. Uh, and then um, I am going to define a property on it called it's a game object. I'm going to call it the uh, explosion prefab and make it public so that it's going to be visible within um, Unity. And what's cool about it is it's going to allow me to add um, 
you know, sort of drag and drop stuff into it. So uh, what this robot will do is, I wonder if I want to put it here or up here. Ideally, you want to put it up here so that when you do the explosion, it'll hide stuff. So um, we're going to hide this when it explodes and then show our um, our chunks. So I'm going to put the script on the parent level, this robot, and in here it's expecting this explosion prefab. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create an empty uh, object here. We'll call it our explosions and just grab this enemy chunk, put it here. And what I want to do is I want to it's going to have all these objects associated with it. So I'm going to take all these and you want to add a mesh to these guys. So let's add a mesh. No, that's not what I want. Um, let's add a, I believe it's under, it's probably under physics. Here we go. A mesh collider and make sure this is convex otherwise it'll just go through the um, the floor there the ground and then I want to add rigid objects to these as well da -da -da. physics uh, make it rigid bodies and all this thing I'm doing it's being applied to everything I've selected there so um, here's the mesh collider and um, Let's go in and change the mass to something like 0.1. We don't want them to be that heavy. Use gravity, yes. And then um, I think that's pretty much it. We've set up um, this guy so that it uh, forces can be applied to it, etc. So let's go in and do one more thing is just to rotate uh, this uh, object by 180. There we go. And then we're going to go in and take this. Let's do, instead of calling this chunks, we'll call it robot enemy explosion. And we're going to drag this to uh, the project folder under prefabs. there and then we can hide this from our scene and what this is going to allow us to do when um, is we have we created this um, sort of object from our designer and we can take this and reuse it in other areas and we can take this actual prefab and add it to our robot object there so we can take the prefab and put it here and at some point access that particular uh, template and instantiate it and apply force to it. All right, so what I need to do is add a script that will take the chunks that we created in this explosions um, object. Let me actually hide this guy real quick. So it'll take the chunks that are here and um, that has rigid body uh, that has rigid bodies, find them uh, and apply forces to them. Uh, and I'm cheating a little bit. I'm gonna create this uh, C sharp script and call this um, explosion force. And I've already I had some existing code. I'm gonna use that. Uh, and this is called, rename this to Explosion Force. And um, here's what it's doing when the, um, when the script is activated or when the object is activated, it's going to find all the children uh, that's in there and it's going to force out the children. So find children, it just goes through and uh, finds anything that has a rigid body and adds it to uh, the chunks list that it has and force out children just go through all the chunks that are there and apply force to a particular direction this one is um, one thing I did with my 
uh, bleeping bots game is I applied the uh, a force towards the camera instead of you know radially outwards. Uh, it's still going in the x y direction relative to the parent of those chunks, um, but that is pretty much uh, what that does. So let's go back to um, our robot enemy ex explosion and apply add this script to that object. And so when we hit play, we should see that, oh, oh that is way too much force. Let's reduce that a little bit to um, 0.5 maybe and see what happens. There we go. So there's that chunk explosion. Um, and you could probably go in and play with some of these um, objects so that it doesn't like necessarily fall out the way um, it looks just now. Let's zoom in here. Oh, let's take, we did this sphere. Let's do this sphere, rotate it as well. Maybe move it to the left here, or to the right here. Uh, there's some shortcut keys, QWERT, um, sort of toggle shoe between these modes. Take this guy, W to select, but that one doesn't like it. Uh, move this out a little, maybe rotate it. Uh, take this guy. Ah, oh, shoot. Where are you at? You are at here. E. Rotate it. Oh, okay. Interesting. Alright, and so when we hit play again, it has a little bit more distributed um, explosion. Let's try it again. <sighs> All right. So one thing we should do is probably uh, um, go and apply some lighting here. Is it settings? Generate lighting because it doesn't quite look right. Okay, close that. Let's apply this. Boom. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. That looks more of the materials that we created. All right, cool. So we've created the um, we've created the script to force out these chunks. We've created the chunk model. Uh, created the script to force out the chunks, and then we created a prefab. Uh, that we can use in our um, other part here in our other scripts. So the plan is we're going to intercept some or add some events to the die animation. So when it reaches the end, it's going to hide. Um, let me first apply this. So where we've created a template for this robot enemy explosion set of objects. When we're modifying things here, it doesn't necessarily apply them to the template. So next time you create an instance from that template, it doesn't necessarily have the properties that are here. So you have to select your object, apply it, and now any time that you create this, whatever properties were here uh, uh, is going to be applied to that template. So let's do that. But the goal is um, we have this robot enemy. I'm going to go ahead and hide these guys. We have this robot enemy. This robot enemy. Wait, what's not? This is not hidden. But this is hidden. We have this robot enemy. We've got this robot uh, parent object, and we've got this robot enemy model uh, that hat that takes this player input. When you hit K, it should put it into the idle animation at some point, in, not into the die animation. At some point in the die animation, we want to hide this and display our chunks and have it explode. So uh, we need something to sort of handle those events. And I believe, I don't know that this can necessarily, I think it has to be a script here. So 
we should create a robot enemy controller script that might handle that. So let's go here and do create C sharp script robot. Oh, that's not what we want. Um, is it? It is. Create C sharp script robot enemy controller. That's going to be interesting to see if the events go all the way up to here. Let's try it. All right. I think next we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to add events and intercept events uh, within an animation. All right. So this next thing we're going to do is um, add an event to an animation that can be handled uh, somewhere in code. So let's take a look at our uh, our model, which is the robot enemy, and we can look at the animation um, that's here, and we can add an event to it. So here's the die event, uh, and we can add events here at a, at certain parts of an animation. So let's. What I want to do is uh, make this area bigger. So if you just take two fingers and sort of go from the center out it's going to expand uh, this view so we can play this animation which is the die animation hit hit play and you can sort of see what it's doing so what we want to do is along um, along these the timeline here and as I click on this area uh, beside this play button this gray area it's so it lets you control what timeline you're on it also moves you know stuff along here but um, we can add events when certain animations start so let's say early on I want to add an event and I'm gonna call it on uh, die uh, let's do on begin die and what this is is the controller when it gets to this point, um, Unity will look at the object that contains um, that uh, that the con that the controller that this animation belongs to, and it's going to see if there's any associated components scripts that have this uh, on begin die function, uh, and then invoke it. So this is how we can add a script to. Uh, a model uh, within the object uh, so that we can handle like if I'm if I'm beginning to die I may want to show a bunch of steam a bunch of particles coming out of the robot uh, and then when I get to a certain point this thing is doing uh, shake 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 tilt 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 and pose right when I'm almost done maybe I want to um, do something else like create my chunks object and um, apply the you know the outward force and then maybe hide this model so uh, what I want to do is add an event event called on um, finish die so on on begin die on let's call it on end die and I may want to create like a big particle explosion and then obviously our chunk explosion so let's just hit apply and I don't remember if the search for the function events the handlers for these events is only done at this level or if it's also done maybe at the parent level too we can test that so let's go in and um, go to our robot function which is associate is a component of the parent of our model that contains the animations of the states um, that it, that they belong to let's see if 
um, if it will call the stuff here. Otherwise, it'll give us an error. So let's do. I'm gonna make these public. Oh, it's not required to be public, but I like to make it public to know it was meant to be called outside of here. Public void on begin die. And similar to the very end of our explosion, which is on end die. And if it doesn't call the parent, we could just add a script to our um, to this guy to our model uh, and have it sort of call the parent and get that robot component um, out of the parent. So let's just do. Um, debug dot log on begin die unity will complain anyway if it's not there on end die all right so let's play this what it should do is it should do that when I hit K all right it should Oh, there we go. On, <clears throat> on begin die has no receiver. So what I suspected was true. Um, robot enemies there. So what we should do is um, add this to component into robot enemy. And then robot enemy controller is going to have to be the one to intercept that event. Um, and go to edit script. So let's copy and paste this. To our controller and let's do very very near the end here so now let's do play and let's do K and so on you see it down there on begin die on end die but it's just moving back and forth so we probably should <clears throat> modify our animator so that once you're dead, you're dead. Um, let's delete command delete to delete that. So once you die, you die. So what we need is um, our robot controller uh, handles events from our animation. Robot is the parent object and it has information about the explosion prefab. So what we need to do is create a function here that our uh, robot enemy can controller, robot, robot enemy controller can call. So public void, um, let's do explode. Just say do explosion. All right. So here, on begin die, um, uh, do begin explosion. Let's do it that way. Do end explosion. And uh, we can decide whether we want to put steam and uh, other things in there. So let's go in and. Um, Here's a good practice. Um, you should, what you want is access to this robot object. So just call it robot. And on start, is you want to do um, transform dot uh, parent dot get component robot. Oh. And it's a generic. Uh, call there and then on begin die robot dot uh, do begin explosion and then at the end we do what's wrong with this do begin explosion oh and then this does do end explosion. And I think we don't get any complaints. 
We should be good. Okay. Okay, so we don't get any complaints down here. So now we should be able to. Uh, what robot sh uh, the robot itself should do is at the beginning is uh, find the model. Um, we're gonna have public game object the robot model. Um, and I'm just gonna skip it here. Robot model equals to transform dot find an object named. If you look here, our uh, this is robot robot object. This is a robot um, script. The name of this object is called robot enemy. We're gonna hide this um, at the end of the explosion. So find robot enemy. And then um, do begin explosion, do an explosion. What we'll do is robot model dot set active is false. So we'll no longer see that. Let's see what happens when we do that. Oh, let's play. Ah, where'd it go? Play. What the heck? Oh, there's errors. Huh. Let's compile. Oh, it's expecting a game object here. All right. So when we do our kill, it's going to do shake, shake, boom, and it's gone. And this is the time that you would uh, show our, or create our chunk and instantiate it, and it'll show at the bottom there. All right, let's see. So back to here, let's do uh, do explosion. So now <clears throat> what we should do is do game object dot create. Um, no. uh, instantiate instantiate, and we give it our template, which is uh, explosion prefab. And let's say this is our chunks. And then we just want to put it in the same position as the current robot. So we say chunks dot transform dot position equals to robot model dot transform dot position. I think that should do it. This should be really cool. Da -da -da. So let's hit K, go through its stuff, and then there it is the explosion of the robots. Yes! Probably add more stuff in there, like um, when it does, right before the explosion, have a particle system that does the emission. Uh, and also you can add sound uh, as well. All right, let's go ahead and add um, the explosion sound and also the, um, the particle effects, the explosion. And what we're going to do is we are going to create a new folder. Uh, call it uh, create folder. Just put sounds in there, and we're going. I'm just going to copy some assets that I already have. That was created by moi um, using Audacity format. Oh, it should go in here. Uh, and then I've got this robot explosion dot wave file, and also the ground charge wave. Copy that puppy into here. Uh, and then that should have been picked up here. Ground last charge. We play it. That's what it sounds like. That's the pre charge. That's actual explosion. Let's see how can this work? How can this work? 
Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, dying, and then, yeah, finally explosion. All right, so what we're going to do is in this, um, where should we put it? We'll probably just put it here, and we'll create a new object that has those uh, stuff in it. So create empty, and we're going to have explosion, rename, uh, I'm going to call it explosion stuff. So there we're going to add um, an audio source here. Let's see. How can we add it in here? I think we can go in and do... Can I add it here? Nope. Yes. Yes, it did it. Um, 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 um. I think I want to add... Let me undo that real quick. And do. Hold on. Let me try that again. Robot. Create empty. Let's call it uh, sound. Uh, let's do pre charge. Sound. And then we'll add uh, explosion sound. And then we'll also add this particle effect, explosion effect. And what we'll do is these will be disabled initially. Uh, and at different parts of the dying process, we're going to activate uh, those, each of these game objects. So let's take this Grand Blaster Charge. This is the pre pre-charge sound that's going to be in there and it's going to play on awake the robot explosions goes into the explosion sound and then explosion particles so we're going to add a particle system there and let's do effects particle system uh, this is at zero zero everything's at zero so if we go to the scene we can sort of see what's going on here if we click on or if we click on the particle system we can see what it's doing let's design it a little bit we're going to change the shape to instead of a cone let's change it to a sphere uh, and then let's um, make it a different color start color let's make it more sort of orange give it some saturation and we can control the speed a little bit and slow it down so it's more uh, concentrated. Uh, so let's do start speed. Let's make it two. And let's give it a life of, um, let's make it a speed of one so it's closer. Let's give it some size. Start size is four. And that looks really explosive right there. All right, and then let's go in and what am I doing here? Uh, also make it so it's uh, it's called pre-warm. So instead of the particle starting to build, it's already sort of like all built out. So instead of starting in the middle and going out, it's sort of like it covers the whole envelope of things. And that one might be a little bit too big. Let's see. Eh. 3.5 maybe, 3.5, that should be good for, uh, just for testing. All right, so what we'll do is we'll disable all of these uh, and enable them at the right time to give us the right effect. All right, so all that is disabled. So we'll take a look at our robot uh, script. And in here we do do begin explosion. We have this explosion prefab. We have the model. Um, we'll also this doesn't really need to be public. Uh, we also need the um, precharge sound. Uh, this is the explosion sound. And we need the, um, what do we call this thing? Explosion particles.
And in, in the beginning, we'll find all these guys. So we'll say precharge sound equals to same structure as this. And let's do uh, not robot enemy, but its name is precharge sound. And the explosion sound. is that and then the explosion particles is called explosion particles all right let's do play real quick and see what happens oh let's com fix compiler errors expected is there a server? All right, and so what we do is when we start to begin the explosion, we need to do precharge sound dot set active is true. And then we also need, I don't know if we need the precharge sound there, but when we do the explosion, we need to show Explosion sound dot set active to true. And then the explosion particles set active to true as well. Really, we need a pre charge particle system here. So let's also add um, pre charge particles. And let's put it over. Hold on, where am I putting it? And I'm just going to copy this um, particle system there and put it arg. Uh, I need to create an empty to be able to paste that, but paste that here, delete this, and then instead of it being orange, we'll make it a different color. Um, let's make it sort of less, and then make the lifetime a little bit, um, or the speed a little bit slower too, so it's a smaller scale. So let's do, where am I at? Lifetime, let's say two. Let's make it one. 1.5 maybe. There we go. So it looks like it's starting to do something, do something, and then finally it goes and explodes. All right, so let's hide this guy. And then let's go into this code and do um, precharge particles. Pre-charge particles, and um, let's find that here as well. Pre-charge particles. Pre-charge, and then here we'll do pre-charge particles dot set active to true. All right, now let's see what happens. So this plays. And let's see if I get any errors. I don't get any errors, so let's hit the kill kill key. Oh, we need like a much longer sort of thing. So this one, the you want the explosion to eventually go away. So let's see how to do that. If we go to our, um, let's look at explosion particles. 
look at our particle system. Duration, um, it shouldn't be looping. Don't loop. And let's do simulate. It'll just do it for that long, one, two, three, four, five. And then that should be it. It should do a pre-warm. Let's try it and see what it does. Oh, hold on. This has to be not active. Hit play. Hit kill. And then, oof. And then it should go away eventually. And it is gone. So we just need to play with uh, a little bit with the duration of this. The explosion, it should last about a minute or a second. The charging particles should last about maybe like two, like 1.5 seconds. Uh, and then let's try it again and see what looks right. All right, hit the kill button and then charge, charge, boom. And then it should all eventually go away. And it, it's lasting too long. Oh, the other guy is looping. That's the issue. Free charge is looping. Don't loop. And let's try it again. And hit the kill button. Boom. And I think it needs... Interesting. Let me try that again. Kill. And I think the speed needs to be faster because it's um, not big enough. Particle system, duration, speed. Let's make it two. Lifetime, let's make that uh, two as well. Let's see what happens here. Kill. A little bit better. So you can play around with the explosion particles. You can add um, better sound for the pre-charge. Um, but that's pretty much it. I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty straightforward. It took a little bit of time to get through it. But, you know, idea or uh, from a logical perspective, it's pretty straightforward. That's pretty much it. Um, if you haven't noticed my subliminal messages, uh, go to my website, bleepingbots.com. Check out my game. It's on the App Store and Google Play. Um, lots of improvements since I uh, first started it. Um, but thank you for watching my video. Leave, uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Thank you, guys.